what's going on? It's Ashley coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. How are you all doing? You pull any of these shards? Are you a sucker like me? That's right, another shard opening video for you guys. We have a proverbial smorgasbord board for you guys in terms of shards. We get some sacreds, we get some ancients, kind of a few ancients here. There's no double time chance, so I only have a 0.5% chance to pull legendary. But they got me. They got me. A, I want to kind of get some of these epics for the fusion out of the way. That way I don't have to do the fusion. The lazy in me kind of comes out in some of these events. And B, I need to do the shard opening event anyway for the fusion. And C, and primarily, two of these champions actually don't have and I would kind of like to get my hands on. And that's Kaioku and also a uh, Crypt King Growl. So I don't have either of these champions. Uh, Crypt King especially really want. Ignatius even I have, but I would love to empower this dude. If you have Ignatius, you know what I'm talking about, man. For a defense-based champion, this guy can deal out a tremendous amount of damage. He's a beast. So uh, yeah, would like another Ignatius. Can't go wrong with any of these legendaries. Uh, also, I'm not going to be opening any uh, Void Shards, but Tumisia is uh, is an interesting champion as well. A uh, pretty cool champion, if you ask me. Uh, but again, I don't have any Voids, and I'm not I'm, <laughs> I'm not buying that pack string or that string pack or whatever the heck they're called. So let's go ahead and jump into it here, guys. I will be giving $100 for every legendary that we pull. Hopefully, it's at least $100 maybe $200, uh, to the Ark of the United States. I mentioned it before, but before my brother passed away, uh, sadly, 40 years ago, he, we had my family, uh, we didn't grow up with a lot, you know, we weren't, like, homeless, but we were pretty poor, you know, as a family, and uh, we relied heavily on uh, organizations like the Ark of the uh, United States, Massachusetts, where I'm from, basically connecting us with services that the government was already providing. But sometimes as families, uh, those who have intellectual or developmental disabilities, you don't know what's available to you. You just kind of, it's there's no roadmap. So they really helped out me personally in my family and my brother as well. So love to give back where we can. Uh, so Seeker, so far, okay. Lady Atessa, I'm really looking for, again, obviously. Ooh. Rorik Wormbane, bro? Oh, man, dude. You're not even a 10x champion. Get out of here, Rorik. Get out of here, bro. You are going to become... You are going to become life tokens, my friend. You are going to become life tokens. I don't know. Can you tell I'm not a big fan of Rorik? Anybody? What about you guys? Am I crazy? Jeez. All right, he's got a single target stun. He's got a single target ignore defense. Passive effect. Dude, I'm so pouty. What a little baby I am. Uh, we'll always use this skill instead of the default skill when counterattacking. And the skill cannot be blocked by block active skills. Uh, and he's immune to stuns. He deals 15% more damage uh, to bosses and receives 15% less damage from them. I don't know, guys. You know, not the trashiest champion in the world, all jokes aside. But I was a little underwhelmed uh, by him, to say the least, uh, when he was a fragment summon. So, yeah, not super excited. I, there's nothing weirder or worse than pulling a legendary on a 10 time event, but it's not a, it's not a 10 time legendary. I have 10 time on three legendaries, but I still get Rorik. Okay, rant over, back to positivity. <laughs> Soulbound Boyer, a few good rares in there, but you know, do you guys really get out of bed for rares anymore? I don't, I don't. Rares were cool in like 2019 in this game. Uh, Phoenix, don't call me Fenax. <laughs> He's actually a really, really good epic champion. We had uh, Mad Capper on the channel either yesterday or tomorrow. I'm not sure which order I want to upload these videos. I want to space out my shard opening videos, not to piss off that one guy in the comments who was always like, You dirty degenerate. You give your money to Plarium. I'm so angry at you, Ash. Chill, bro. It's all good. It's all good, man. Why are you watching the video if you hate it? Anyway, here we go. Phoenix. Fenex, really good champion. He has a very, very hard hitting A1. I think the second or the third hardest hitting A1 in the game, including legendaries. 
at least as of six months ago, the last time I checked. Uh, very, very cool. And it denies revival as well on the A2 and AoE block buffs and block active skills. I love block buffs debuff. So uh, clutch now, especially in the game where it feels like every champion has so many buffs, including uh, Hydra Clan boss. And then we have a single target decrease speed and decrease defense. Great against Doom Tower bosses. This dude is just really, really good. Really, really good uh, epic champion. All right, we've got to be close to at capacity here. So give me another Lego, and then we'll make room. At least give me a fusion epic, dude. All right. Anax is a pretty good champion. I haven't built him out, but people say he's really incredible for clan boss. So I might build him out. Let me know if you want to see me build any of these champions out, except for Ultimate Galek. We've already done a guide on him. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a pretty good champion. Pretty good for Spider. Sinesha is really, really good. Uh, so again, some pretty good epics here, but... Uh, you know, you know, we're greedy. We want some legendaries. Hey, hey, you know what I'm just gonna do? I'm just gonna go ahead and empower my Fenax. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, they, they don't they don't have that. They don't have champion empowerment for epics, do they? Okay, so we'll just, we'll just use him as food instead. <laughs> Man, is that a good idea or is it a bad idea? Champion empowerment for epics. I think it's a great idea. But tell me if I'm missing a downside. I don't think there's a downside. All right, so I have 42 Ancients. Uh, let me briefly interrupt this regularly scheduled Ancient Shard opening with one Sacred before we make room. And then we'll do the other three Sacreds at the end of the video. So we get an Epic. His name is Pitiless One. Uh, yeah, Pitiless One, not that good. All right, let me make some room. I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, we're back. I'm ready for another Legendary. Let's do this. All right, let's do it. Let me know if you guys pulled any. If you got lucky and got any of these uh, these Legos or even some of the epics, let me know. Hey, how you doing? I love Iron Brago. We're going to go ahead and empower him up, but another non-10-time champion? It feels weird, man. Now, Iron Brago is no Rorik Wormbane. I think Iron Brago is one of the better legendaries in the game. So I'm excited to get him uh, empowered, I, I think. Or do I want to put him in a Fashion Guardian? Is my Fashion Guardians maxed? Stay tuned and find out. So uh, he was also a, a fusion uh, or a fragment summon. Fragment summon? Fusion? Eh, either way, right? Tomato, tomato. Increased defense for three turns on a three-turn cooldown. Also has a stun. He has an AoE provoke. He has a decreased attack. Uh, if he's under increased defense, just a tremendous champion. And it increases defense of all allies by 10% of this champion's defense? Dude, come on, man. He's a great champion. A really, really good clan boss carry. Uh, or just carry anywhere in the game, man. I really, really like him. I did a guide on him. Somewhat recently talking about how much I love the dude. All right, Virgis. That's two hundred dollars to charity. To the Ark of uh, the United States. That's pretty cool. I, I still can't believe it's two. Like, come on, man. I know the odds are that it can happen, obviously, but it's a zero point five percent chance to pull a legendary, and then ten times, ten times when you do pull a legendary, that it's one of these three legendaries. Somebody who's way smarter than me in the comments, let me know. What are the odds of actually pulling one of those 10 time legendaries versus another legendary in the game? You let me know. Somebody smarter than- Oh, another one! Boom, boom, boom! Uno, dos, tres, hey! There we go! There we go! Third time's a charm, baby! Hey. Kaioku, come to daddy! <laughs> that was awful, bro. That was awful. There's no redos in shard opening video. Three hits at the target has three or more debuffs. That's cool. So do you put her in Giant Slayer or War Master? I guess it depends. Defense based, attacks all enemy, uh, decrease attack. That's 100% land rate. After attacking, 100% chance of placing HP burn debuff for two turns on all enemies. That this skill did not place decrease attack. That's weird, man. That's just a weird, I don't know what's up with that. Uh, on the A3, ally protect and block damage on herself, and then grants an extra turn. I love grants an extra turn abilities, and every time this champion is hit with a critical hit, heals all allies by 15% of their max HP, then places increased defense on all of them by two for two turns. That happens once every four turns, and keep in mind, once every four turns, but she's also proccing extra turns on her A3. 
Really, really good champion. I'm, I'm really excited. And defense and all battles by 30% as well. All right. Now we're talking, guys. Now we're talking. We have two Ancient Shards left. And then three Sacred Shards. Could this be a four Legendary video? Oh, man. I'm just glad I don't have to re-up more Shards, you know? I'm sick of buying more Shards, dude. All right. Here we go. Berserker. Hey, I gotta say, I can't complain this video. Can't complain at all. I will check a quick look at my orc uh, faction at Thenisil. Thenisil, kind of a victim of power creep, huh? Oak skinned used to be like you OG players, you'll remember. Back in the day, it's just like, oh, increased defense on a three turn cooldown. Whoa, 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 whoa. Good stuff here. Like, it was only like him and Mausoleum Mage and I don't know what, marked. I'm talking about non legendaries, three turn cooldown, increased defense. There wasn't a lot. There's I'm probably forgetting a couple, but there wasn't a lot back in the day, so. Venisil used to be really important in that regard, but now they're, they're a dime a dozen. Uh, Mordecai, however, is an incredible champion. Really good. I use him on Spider-25. Really, really good damage dealer. Has turn meter control as well on his A2 and that HP burn with the increased attack. Uh, very, very good champ. And our last shard's gonna be, boom, an epic and it's going to be separate show sentinel so very very good champion increased defense block debuffs for two turns on a four turn cooldown and then that chance of completely blocking incoming damage coin flip 50 50 shot uh, on one ally so look guys let's go ahead and uh did i get did i miss hey well 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 i'm not gonna include <laughs> yeah we'll see boom another legendary i can't believe it guys it's cleo patrick's that's four hundred dollars to uh, charity, guys. Okay, so I just had the fragments anyway, but uh, we have another legendary that we didn't have before. So here we go. We have a weakened debuff for two turns. Uh, chance of clues to 50%. The target's under hex. Plays a perfect veil on this champion for one turn of the attack. Kills an enemy under hex. Okay. Uh, increased crit rate uh, buff. This is the, by the way, the uh, daily login reward. This is what we get instead of the sacred shards. Increased crit rate in the champion for two turns, and then attacks all enemy. Yay. 100% uh, chance of placing a block active skills debuff for two uh, turns on targets under hex. Increased accuracy on the champion for two turns and attacks all enemies. Has a 100% chance of placing hex debuff for three turns. Has a 100% chance of placing fear debuff for one turn instead on enemies under hex debuffs. To me, like, I'm thinking maybe... Maybe counterattacks with a default skill every time this champion loses 30% HP or more in a single turn. Always counterattacks when attacked if two or more allies are dead. So then we have the weaken, we have the perfect veil. Kind of cool. I don't know. Skinwalker, people hate her, right? Yeah, they hate her. I think personally, some of this hatred is based on her being now our replacement on the daily login rewards, you know? Because she doesn't seem like, especially, they keep adding like 55 hex champions a month, it seems like, right? So, I feel like, you know, eventually everybody's going to have hex, and then she's a lot better, a lot more intriguing. Her kit does not blow me away, but I don't think she's absolute trash, you know? What about you guys? Be, be real with me. Is she absolute trash? Is some of it just because of the hate uh, in general on the champion? You guys go ahead and let me know. All right, let's go ahead and see what I have in the uh, champion gardens. Let's see, uh, Faction Guardians for Orcs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We just have to go with the uh, the defense. We're not going to empower him. Not worth it. I'd rather have 10% extra defense on all of my legendaries from the Orc Faction. So, guys, there we have it. This is the video. $300, $400, excuse me, to charity. Happy to do it here. Happy holidays to all of you guys. This will be my last shard opening video, at least, to, at least till Christmas. I think, I think, <laughs> you know, knock on wood, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Guys, thank you for watching all the way till the end, I appreciate it. Have a great day, have a great holiday uh, as well. Thank you, and as always, take care, guys. Oh, oh, oh.